Welcome to a virtual tour of the Digital Media Commons in the Duderstadt Center. We start in the incoming atrium, and when we go through these doors, you'll find our little coffee shop cafe called Mujo. Mujo will be open to sell coffee and snacks and food and stuff like that, but you can't eat or drink in the building this fall. Turning now, we go through our central open area here and come upon the information desk. This is where you would go to check out keys to various places that require keys to get in. Moving along, we move behind the info desk into what used to be called the central collaboration area. It still is, but you can't collaborate there right now. And we find Groundworks. Groundworks is what we call our front door. More on that in a minute. Uh, but this is all just to give you a quick visual survey of what it's going to look like. There's far fewer workstations than normally are there due to COVID spacing requirements, but it includes the conversion rack, a convenient place to take your old VHS tapes and turn them into a digital file. And we also have this lovely photo table, uh, which will not have the ladder in it when we open up. Uh, a great place to take good pictures of anything very easily. Moving along, we get to the design studio. This is all, again, open by appointment only, um, but a lot of different student groups meet there. Um, it's an interesting place. The Fabrication Studio, home of 3D printing in the Duderstadt Center. It also contains electronic workbenches, hand tools, more about that later on, but this gives you an idea of what it looks like. From there, we're going to move over to the Visualization Studio. This is the really interesting new facility we've got. It has 18 Oculus Rift workstations and four completely wireless Vive workstations. Uh, it's used for teaching, it's used for classwork, it's used for a lot of things. In the room next door, we have the MyDen, Michigan Immersive Digital Experience Nexus. Uh, this is the room, as I say later, where you can put on the glasses and you can fly. It's a completely immersive uh, virtual environment. And unlike the headsets, it engages all of your sights, including peripheral vision. We're going to move on down now and look at our audio studios. First on the list, uh, are the first entry-level studios. First one we're going to go to is no longer called Electronic Music A, but Studio C. This one is where you have to work first. Um, it's got a nice little uh, API console. Um, it's set up for what we call mix to picture. Um, more on that later if you like. Moving along, we're going to back out and head right next door to Studio B. Studio B is the closest thing we have to Studio A, and then it has the same console, just not as many channels. It's a great big API vision console, a lot of knobs on there. Um, these are really great analog consoles, not digital, something we did very carefully uh, in order to keep the pedagogy of teaching everyone about audio more straightforward. So we have an analog heart, but it's all digital recording and processing after that. Moving along, we're going to head down the hallway to what we call our flagship studio, Studio A. It looks familiar. I see that console. It's just more channels in it. Um, a lot of cool outboard gear. This is the only one that has the tracking room, which you see through the windows there, with computers being set up at the moment. Isolation booth. Oh, look, there I am. And full digital recording on the outboard side. Again, multiple speakers. This is really research labs and not just a plain recording studio. We're going to zip on through to the video studio now, which is right next door. These two facilities are quite interconnected, making it easy to use the audio studio if we surpass the recording capabilities of the audio studio, which these days is pretty rare. This is a pretty good spot. Um, you can see it's huge, it's complex, it's got the biggest green screen in, in the building. We have uh, five or maybe six available in the building. Uh, moving on down now, we're going to take a quick trip down, around and around. Design Studio is on our right, and as you're looking ahead here, we're going to come across the hallway with the multimedia workrooms. These are something that are fairly easy to get access to, along with the recording booth. Um, this is room one, and you'll notice that right here, uh, we have a podcasting station set up. It's got four sports-style headset boom mic sets. Um, it's a great, easy way to do audio podcasts. We have several groups that do those. Just to give you a quick orientation as we move on here, this is the way to the Bonnesteel 
uh, Murfin bus stops. We're going to come back in and move through the atrium where we were and down the connector hall. Hi, Lori. We're going to stop halfway through and we're going to go look at the personal studio, which is down in one of our former conference rooms. As you can see right here, as I unlock the door, we're going to go in and I'll turn on the room lights and then the, the video lights. It has a green screen pre-sung, preset lighting. It's all full of very professional equipment. It's quite easy to walk in here and with almost no effort at all record an excellent presentation. The key to all this is that teleprompter, that box that's over the camera. Uh, you can actually see what you're talking about as you're looking into the camera. Wireless lav mics for interviews and we're on our way. Moving now farther down the connector hall we get to the gallery. The gallery is a lovely place. Um, it's in the process of being emptied out of the show that was about to go up uh, when the university locked down. But you can see it's nice, big, got open windows out to uh, the hallway, and you can get daylight in there. It's a lovely place. And here's a colleague I haven't seen in a while. A little elbow tap on the way out, and away we go. We're now heading back to where we started, at the front of the building, in the atrium. It's lovely. I didn't really show you much of it, but... You can see it's got lovely, lots of daylight, three stories high. It's a wonderful place. Uh, unfortunately, you can't hang out there right now. Heading back out to where we first started, give you a location. There's Lurie Tower, and we're going to circle around and come back to right where we started. Inside and looking in.